Hi there. We're going to be doing some embellishments on cards. Jan has asked me to show you how I do some of my little things that I do on cards. and Anybody can do them. It doesn't take a, a lot of skill or anything to do that. Uh, what it does take is a lot of materials, unfortunately, and I have a, a, a ton of those. Some of the things I like to use uh, are rubber stamps. This is one that I'm using for happy birthday. Another one that I have is a personalized one that I put on the back that says handcrafted or hand stamped. Uh, hand, handmade Greetings by Lynn Ole's Card Shop. So I had that one made. And there's lots and lots and lots of different um, stamps. I just happen to have birthday wishes ones out here because that's what she did for her card. So some of the other things that are basic necessities that you'll need is a good card stock. I prefer to use the Basil or Paper Studio heavier card stock for the base of my cards. You can get these at Michael's, Joann's, or Hobby Lobby. Just not the real thin construction type paper. So that's what I use for the base of my cards and for um, doing some layering. So these are some of the scraps that I have from things that I've made. The other things that I use are decorative papers. And they can be the 8.5 by 11 or it can be 12 by 12. It just depends on what you're doing. These are both birthday ones and can be whatever you want it to be. You just kind of got to look at all the different papers and, and look at Michael's and those places when they have their papers on sale. A lot of times you can get them for, you know, four for a dollar or whatever. Uh, it depends on which ones you're looking at. So here's a 12 by 12 that I thought would look like a birthday card. If I wanted to do something a little more fancy, then I would go into, uh, this kind of is a foil. And it's a 12 by 12. And this happens to be a paper studio and they are $2 a sheet, but... Again, I buy them when they're on sale and they're 50% off, so that makes it a lot more uh, efficient. So just some different uh, metallics. If you're into metallics, I, I'd like the shiny metallic stuff. So here's some of the other ones that I purchased that were out there. So uh, And then I used this one. So those are the paper basics, basically, that I used. And there are lots and lots of different types of papers that you can use to embellish with. There are uh, metallic papers. There are just like with any other craft, there's glitter paper uh, and there's regular paper. And to embellish with these, I, here's a nice little heavy duty fabric, or I mean uh, paper that I really wouldn't recommend you cutting this with a punch or with your paper trimmer, but you do need a good paper trimmer uh, if you're gonna make your own cards. Now I'm, cut my own cards out for the size that I want normally, but you can use already pre-made cards. Um, I just make sure that I have a good 12 by 12 uh, cutter that I can use. That's just one of many that I have. I have for adhesive, I have a Scotch ATG gun. There are many other brands um, that you can use. There's glue. My preferred white glue, craft glue, is the Scotch quick dry adhesive. Um, there are other little, you know, tape runners that you can use. Some other things that I use a lot are punches just for, um, different effects. So this particular one, uh, punches a flourish. I like to do from the backside so I can see where my punch is going. Apparently this one's going to be a little bit tough. I must have grabbed the wrong one. So you don't want to grab this one apparently because it doesn't want to come undone. So we'll just tear that off of there. Always something when you're live on camera. And then, of course, there's pre-punched ones that are pre-shaped ones that this happens to be an oval. And uh, apparently my punches are going to be temperamental today. Okay, we're going to try this again with our punches. Um, so this is one that I have that's a, a flourish that I like to use a lot. And so I've punched one of those out and that does that. Then I have graduated sized uh, in various shapes. These happen to be ovals. So there's uh, a four set size of that. So if you were going to be layering things, you could punch out. Well, I didn't get it all the way in there naturally. This is why I have to do it from the underside so I can make sure I get everything in the punch. 
So there's my large one. And the next size down. Now I've already done those. So you can see how these graduate down in size all the way down to um, a tinier size. So if you were looking to layer things, that this would be something that you could do. There's also border dies and things that you can use to um, cut special edges on your paper, like this particular one if you were wanting a fence. This happens to be a Martha Stewart punch. So I would just line these up. So then that would cut me a fence line, and then I would cut that off of there with my trimmer. I wanted a decorative edge instead. And you line these back up with the, with the actual design that's on the punch. You line the holes back up so it punches them correctly. So then I've got that border. And then if I wanted to do something like a lace effect, these are all Martha Stewart punches. I don't even know if they still make these. But uh, again, I would line these up here in my punch and line the pattern back up again. Oops, looks like I missed one here. So eventually I would have a lace border that I could cut all the way off. So let's just so see if we can finish doing this one real quick and one more so now I have a lace border if I wanted to put that on one of my cards so and then there are other things that you can use to um, create embellishments on your cards um, there are dies that are Sizzix dies um, things like that and I have lots of those as well. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into depth. You can see I was doing a scrapbooking page here. And you can see this particular die was of a uh, bride. And so it was going on a card that I made for my daughter. So I cut that out with a, um, a die. And it can be done with your scan and cuts. It can be used with uh, punches or any other you know, cutting machine that you have. If you're a great artist, you can do that yourself too. Let me move these all out of the way. Get my little scraps of paper out. I also have mats down here that I use to protect um, my surface because if I'm inking, then I don't want to get that all over my uh, cutting mats and uh, whatever. So I have these kind of like a silpat mat here. And you can buy these at any craft store or you, just anything. You put newspapers down to uh, protect your surfaces. Some of the other things that I use are ink pads. This happens to be a dye-based ink. It's black and that's what I used to rubber stamp with um, and you do have to clean off your stamps. But uh, this one doesn't require a heat gun or embossing powder. It dries automatically just like any other ink pad that you have. So that's a dye-based ink. They come in various colors. This is black. I've also used some distress inks which, and I'll show you what those are when I get to the cards. And these come, these are a Tim Holtz thing. There's probably other brands as well out there um, that I use to distress the edges of uh, various cards and, and cardstock and so forth. And of course, there's always the other embellishments. And I have lots of brads. These are kind of square, shiny brads. These are called sugar brads, which have kind of the glitter on the different tops of them. I don't know if you can see them. Let's take some of these out. So there, I don't know if I can put this where you can see it. Let's see, let me get my hand where you can see it. So they're kind of sparkly. And those are called sugar brads. And you can get any of these types of things in Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's. Those are the primary places that I get them. And again, I buy them when they're on sale. Some of the other things that you can use uh, are their charms. This happens to be a reindeer one. Here's a crown and a bird. So you can put all these on your um, different cards if you want. 
there's various birds, some wings here. And then of course there's word type bars that you could string with ribbon or with a string onto your card, you know, especially if you're looking for a masculine card. Anything like that. So here's some more brads and they're button shaped. So depending on what you're doing, you may, you know, just look at all the different brads that are out there. And these are all various, these are spare parts that I bought at uh, Hobby Lobby. That's their brand. It's kind of the paper studio brand. And let's see, here we have some stars, various stars, sizes. You can use um, rhinestones, anything like that as your parts. So these are just some some of the few things that I have. You can use jewelry parts. I've got some here that are like pearls and you can get flat pearls and so forth. So anyway, that's kind of the basics of all of the little things that I use to help embellish my cards with. Get these all out of your way here. And the other thing that I use a lot besides the glue over here is foam tape. Now this is an extremely large roll of foam tape. And it's normally, and this one is actually thicker than what I normally use, but this worked fine for me. I really just couldn't find my thinner uh, foam tape, but I just cut it into pieces as to the sizes that I need. And you can see it's on a large roll and you can get these again, not this size. The size would have to come from like an office depot or something like that uh, or online. But um, there's smaller rolls that are in the crafting areas and paper crafting areas and Walmart. I do recommend the Scotch brand versus the Duck brand. I've tried them both, but um, the Scotch brand works a whole, or 3M I should say, works a whole lot better. So with that, um, I'm going to show you some cards that I have done. And then we'll get into making cards. So this one happens to be just a very plain one that was just done with a die cut. And cut out these letters and cut out this flourish and then that's, you can see it's got some rhinestones attached to it. And I haven't got anything on the inside because I don't know what I'm going to, congratulations for a wedding, anniversary, uh, graduation, who knows, birthday can be even that. This one uh, has been embellished as you can see the little brads are in the corners and I like to use ribbon a lot so that's one of my main embellishments. And you can see it's been layered with different colors and it's got your cardstock and it's got your decorative papers here. And then that theme is repeated on the inside. And again, I haven't put any verse anything on here yet because I haven't found a, a you know a purpose for it yet. This was done with a rubber stamp, and then I used um, chalks back here to um, highlight the coloring to make a color back there. And then these were all done with Copic markers. So those are uh, alcohol-based markers, if you don't know what those are. This is just another plain old good luck card and it was done with dies and again they're just plain if you have stickers if you like to do stickers and there are lots of different stickers out there that you can use this one happens to be a mother's day card and you see i have ribbons and i've layered um on the oh i can't even open it up so these are stickers here, and I've done a little bit of distressing on there. I don't know if you can see that little bit of brown that's in there. That's called distressing. And then a sticker on the inside. So that's a quick way to make uh, a card. And obviously I've done a little bit of ribbon there. Another way to make some cards, uh, this one happens to have been done with um, some uh, with a rubber stamp. And this is an Easter card. And again, it was Copic and layered, and here's the brads, and here's like, it's kind of this punch, only it it's, doesn't have any scalloped edges on it. So I have another punch that's like that. And so then I just put those on the corner. And then I used a different stamp and, uh, on the inside and uh, some decorative paper, and that was how that card was made. Now, some of the other things you can do is you can buy things that are pre-made, that are quite cute and this happens to be another couple of Easter cards that were done with these little bunnies and these little stickers and they were you know I just took a sheet of paper and then you put happy egg day on the inside with a rubber stamp so what I found you know at Christmas time there were all these little um, embellishments that you can buy 
Uh, and so if you were going to make a lot of cards at Christmas time, you could easily put these on just like we did here, how we pop them up. And they already have foam tape on them on the back. So those are quick ways to make cards as well. If you like uh, flowers, you can take your flowers and um, that are you know, the silk flowers that you can find in the, again, in the scrapbooking area, or even the ones that uh, are in stems and take them apart. This just has a brad stuck in the center of it, of those, and then it's all glued down here. The paper itself wasn't cut. It was torn to the size. It was cut for the correct dimension, but it was torn between here. And so you can kind of see, here's another card like that. You can see, and then this along this edge where the white edge of the card would be, I used the Distress Ink. Same way in here that was distressed to just cover up. And then the rubber stamps were done and, and colored and copied. And this was called Fussy Cutting It Out, just like you would with anything that has to do with uh, fabric. Here's another sticker one for Valentine's Day. Again, it's ribbon. I used black distress ink around this one along the edges of this one. And then just put paper stock in there. This one has what's called uh, chipboard on it. This little has two little chipboard pieces with it. So this can be, it says happy days are here, hooray, happy days are here. You can do whatever that's for. It could be end of school year, graduation, whatever. And let's see here. Over here I have some more popped up um, dimensional flowers that, that were pre-purchased. And then in the center I added a little um, rhinestone, little crystal. Again, I haven't put anything on the inside. This is a sticker and then again, just layered. Here you can see where the punch was done along the edge. You see that little scalloped edging there? That's where those punches were used. Same way here and this is where that oval punch was used in that brown ink on there that's distressing was used around here as well just gives some more dimension to your card and then i have a lot of these but because halloween is one of my favorite times to do cards so i brought a lot of those out so um again these are punches and pens and my, this is a signal marker and you just wrote happy halloween rubber stamps and layered again we've got some what's called stickles and some brads on here. Stickles are like little glue things or in little bitty bottles. And you can find all these in the scrapbooking area and the paper crafting card area. Again, I've torn paper here, rubber stamped and layered those. Um, there's the inside. Again, you can see the torn paper, the various torn papers and the layered of the, of the ghost. Some three-dimensional stickers. Here's that fence die that I or punch that I used. And again, these were just stickers that were put on here. This was chalk done back here. Again, these were stickers that are already, you just take them off and put them on. This is other types of stickers, flat stickers, and, and some ribbon that I put underneath the outside layering and put uh, stamped happy birthday on the inside. And again, here's another uh, card that could be, you know, thinking of you or whatever. Happy Mother's Day is a little, just some ribbon that I put in around there. So from there, let's go make some card. Let's work on Jan's cards. Let me, well, let me show you a couple other things here. Sorry about that. So here's like an example of some embellishments that I would use on cards. Here's some flowers that I would use, some 3D type flowers that I would use on cards. And then here's something that I would use for uh, putting on cards as well. They're chipboard pieces that you punch out and you just put them on there. If you're scrapbooking, you do the same effect. These are some things that I stamped and embossed, and so they have a little bit of a raised feel to them, so I just did some ahead of time. So, um, let's see. Here's some stickers. If you were doing, like, here's an all occasion, thank you. If you were, you know, just put that on a piece of cardstock, thank you. Here's one that says occasional sympathy caring hearts or whispering a prayer for healing, thinking of you. So you could put one on the outside and one on the inside. So this is, I just happen to have two of the same one here. Another thing you can do for cards is to make tags. And there are die shapes out there for tags. And um, 
You can put these on top of a card. You can use them as the card. But the same thing applies. It's just a layering effect and rubber stamps and so forth. So if you had a card, let me grab a card here. This one's probably not big enough, but you could put a card like that, put a tag on top of the card like that. Just depends on how much you want to get creative. But these were all rubber stamped and hand colored and some of them were layered. So tags are fun to do as well. And they make great cards. I've done tags, larger tags, just as my Christmas card. Okay, so let's go on to Jan's card. And I've done a, <clears throat> done a little bit of this ahead of time. So um, just to, so it won't take quite as long. Let me get my kind of stuck here. All right, so this is going to be my happy birthday card that Jan gave us the file to cut. So I've already done the outside, and I took my, um, I guess this was going to be for a girl. I used my pink distressing, and I went around the edges of the card there, and you can kind of see it here on the inside. And this was just a rubber stamp. That was the stamp here that said, wishing you a birthday bright with sunshine and warm with love. And so I just stamped that on there and layered my card. Obviously, I don't like everything to just go straight, so I put that on the side. Now, the one part I did do differently here is I've got Jan's happy birthday cut out. And that's when I took my foam. I'm going to make this a three-dimensional on the back side. You can see I have a lot, a lot of foam back here. And um, I just cut my foam down to the size that I wanted. The three-dimensional uh, really does brighten up and, and just enhances your card so much more. So now all I'm going to do is this is double-sided foam tape. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to take all of this tape off of here. So this will take me a little while. So bear with me. And some of this foam is, this tape is old, so the paper wants to stay on there very well. But normally it doesn't take long for it to come off. And the other thing that I'm going to do on this one is I like to use ribbon, ribbons a lot. So I'm going to put ribbons underneath this before I adhere it down. We're getting there. And just get a hold of the paper to pull it off. And I don't want it to come off. It does, and when I do, it won't. So, just kind of got to make it so that all of the pieces stick up, or the letters stick up, so it doesn't have gullies in it. So you want it to be level when you put it on the card. If I put this down, I might be able to get off my fingers just sticking to the foam here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. A lot of foam. Normally I don't have this much foam, so I apologize that there's so much foam here. It's because Jan chose a long word, and I chose to make it three-dimensional. Come on. Sometimes tweezers help. If you don't have fingers that work well, kind of like mine, but my fingers are now sticking to the exposed pieces of foam. So that's making it a little more challenging. I'm trying not to tear my happy birthday from the actual grouping. Let's see if I go this direction, if I can get the rest of them off here quickly. I know you're all saying, oh my God, why would you do that? But it really does uh, make the card. And normally I don't have this much foam tape to take off. Get my fingers from sticking to the foam. That would help me a whole lot.
We're getting there. Trying to keep my happy birthday from tearing away. Okay, well, I'm going to stop there because you get the general idea and I have most of the foam tape off and I don't want you to have to continue to watch me try to fight with that. Get my fingers off of there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to center my happy birthday frame on my cardstock. I'm not going to um, press it down until I know I have where I want it. Okay, so now my frame is down and all I have to do, because I've got all that other foam tape there, is just push this down. Well, apparently this is one where I didn't remove the foam tape cover, so better go back or it isn't going to stick. Okay, let's try that now. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do with this particular card, find my ribbons here. I have some ribbons already cut. And I have four ribbons. I have a pink, a green, a blue, and, and a yellow, which is what's the colors that's in here. I'm going to try to make them the same length or as close to being the same length centered together. And then I'm going to carefully lift up this foam tape. I should have done this actually before I pushed this down all the way, but I'm going to feed these ribbons underneath underneath that foam tape. You see that? So I'm going to push that foam tape back down. Now I'm just going to tie knots with these ribbons. Quick and simple. And then it'll just add a little more color bling to the card. Nothing special. I don't know, probably about six, seven inches of ribbon is what I cut. This is just a sheer ribbon. Get my fingers to work. Can I? Oh, for Pete's sakes. Your fingers will probably work better than mine. Okay, so then I'm just going to fluff out these ribbons. Let's separate them out. Trim them if need be. Like this one's a little bit long, so I will get my scissors over here. And I'm going to trim these at a, an angle. I like the little points to be there. And they're all there. So that's the outside of my card that says happy birthday with some ribbons attached to it and it's been three-dimensionalized and then on the inside i have wishing you a happy birthday layered and i've done the distressing and on the back side i have stamped that it was made by me now, i will go ahead and i'll add the year that i did this this is going to be a birthday card for my um, granddaughter-in-law her birthday's later this month so i thought i would use this card for her now let's go on to the next card. So the next card I decided I would do for my husband for his birthday, which is coming up March 1st. And so I've done a little bit of um, pre-assembly on his. Again, I've made this a little bit bigger card. And I have already put this um, in here, the base card stock on the inside for an accent. On the outside, I have put a decorative paper and another piece of cardstock, and I'm going to glue this down so that there's just a little bit of an, an edge showing that blue. So that gives all of the ties all the colors together. So I will put that down, and I'm going to use my ATG gun for this. So it just goes very quickly. And I'm not real exacting. 
with this. So I'm going to put this down first. And I'm just going to make it equal all the way around on the three sides and the fourth side hopefully will come out. If not, before you go attaching it down permanently, you want to get it up. Okay, so I just eyeball this. If you're an exacting person, you can go ahead and be exacting with a ruler. Now I'm going to take and put my decorative paper on top. I want my ovals to go up like eggs. So again, I'm going to use my ATG gun. Again, you can use any tape runner that you have or your favorite paper glue. I don't really like to use the Elmer's glue because it kind of clumps and so forth. So I'm going to do the same thing with my decorative paper and I'm going to line this up because I didn't cut them real um, far apart in dimension. I just wanted like an eighth of an inch showing all the way around. So now I have my decorative paper on top. I'll get rid of some of this glue paper, this foam tape sticking to my sweatshirt here. So then the next thing that I did was I went to my computer and I made up my own little verse and it says to my wonderful husband on his special day. And I took my little punch here and I made a punch out of both of these colors of cardstock. And then I took my crocodile and did a grump. And that's what um, made that. And if you can put grommets on a lot of your uh, fabric things, so this is a crocodile. It makes a hole punch on one side, and here's where it does sets the actual um, grommet or brad or whatever you want to call it. This is not really a brad, it's more of a grommet. So this is what they look like. Take them out. So get it in camera view, and then it when it you put it through the hole that you made in the paper. And then um, when you punch it down with this side, it condenses down the, um, the brad so it looks like that or the grommet on the back side. So it squeezes it down. So I'll put this back. And this again is a crocodile, and you can buy these at, I think, at any of the craft stores as well. I don't know if you can still get a case or not. So I have put these together and I have you know just kind of stuck them in where a little bit underneath that foam tape and I'm going to put this on here like this but I'm going to use my white glue for this so I'm going to take my scotch glue and I'm going to put some glue around the outside edges of this it, it, it does spread easily so and I'll put some on my corner pieces as well and I don't really like to have it just everything to be straight, so I'm going to put this at an angle on my card, kind of like that. So now that's on my card on the front. And then I have Jan's happy birthday, and I'm just going to put that with my glue like that flat in my card. So again, I'm going to take my white glue. I'm going to go around the edges of it. I'm not going to get real liberal with it because it'll dry white or clear. I mean, if you um, happen to get too much glue on here. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue just about everywhere on all of the letters so that the stay down there. Now that's another thing that you could do if you didn't want to use glue. Um, you can use a sticker machine which has adhesive that you can run it through and uh, again that's another scrapbooking paper crafting item. Just about done here. You do have to make sure you keep your glue lid on and I like to keep it up down like this so that the glue stays down there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my frame. This is happy birthday. And again, you can choose to make it crooked 
I'm going to put this one straight, or as straight as I can make it, and I'm going to tap that down. And a little bit of glue comes out, but again, it's going to dry clear. And so there's this card. Now, if you wanted to add a ribbon, you could, or something more masculine like twine. That would be another thing that you could put on here. Um, so there's my second birthday card. And then I was going to show you how to do um, another card using some embellishments. So the, these are some embellishments that I found. Uh, again, I never buy them at full price. I always wait until they're 50% off. Hobby Lobby has these things. This is, again, from um, Hobby Lobby. Paper Studio is Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to take my little card here, and I've already done my inside. I'm going to show you how I'm doing the outside. Again, I rubber stamped this on here using the stamp, and I used my dye-based ink. I did use my distressor. This time I used the uh, what's called brush corduroy, and it's kind of a brown effect, and so I put that around there instead of the pink. So now I'm going to take, and I'm going to layer me uh, another of my shiny on top of this. And I'm going to put that on top of here, and again, I'm going to center that the same way. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm sometimes it's off, sometimes it's just fine. So there's where I'm at right now. So my card's got to go this direction because that's the way my verse went. So I'm going to take off of here this little birthday cake. And I'm going to put that. Oh, let's put this over here. And I just stick that down. And let's see, other things I have on here are some little candy things. So I'm going to take those off. And I think I'm going to put some of those around where my dots are. And maybe some of these little swirly cues, flourishes type things. Let's put one up here. And there's some stars. Let's see. Put those on there. So you can put on as many things as you want. You could put a party hat and, and so forth. Um, I'm What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to put one of these little um, candies here. And I'm going to put that right here on the inside of my card on the inside. And the last thing that I'm going to do just take some ribbon. I do like my ribbon. So I'm not going to add them there though. I'm just going to leave them be. I'm just going to leave it with the one because I can get more cards out of it this way. So then the only other thing that I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add, I like ribbon. So I'm going to add ribbon. And I have a blue and a white ribbon, which are the primary colors here. Um, I see. I think I cut these the same length. I don't even know what length I cut them. Let's see. About 20 inches, 25 inches. So now I'm just going to take them both together. And I'm going to an attempt to take them both together. And I'm going to wrap them on the inside here. Bring them around. And I want my bow to be on this side because I've got my cake over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to even up my ribbons. I'm going to tie a knot. Now you don't want to pull it too tight, otherwise you can end up tearing your card. Actually, I'm going to put my blue on top because I want, I want that to be... I'm going to flip that over. I want the blue to show more than the white because I have the white background. Come on, Ribbon. Behave yourself. Okay. So, let's try this again. So, 
So I'm going to tie this over here to the bow. Your ribbons are going to um, be able to move. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is tie a little bitty knot so it doesn't come undone for me. It makes it easier for me to tie bows with because my fingers don't work all that well. So if you're good at tying bows, why? More power to you. You won't have to do this part, but I generally have to do this. Okay, so now I have my blue ribbon on top, which which is what I wanted. You can move these. They they won't. Uh, they're not so tight that you can't move them. And then I'm just going to tie my bows. Again, I'm not the best bow tire, so bear with me here. And even out your bow. And sometimes you have to loosen them up and then pull them again until you get them this tightness that you want. And then I just Spread out the bow. My little crooked ear probably have to retie that one. But you get the general idea here. If it's easier, you can tie them individually. Let's see what that does. See what that looks like. Tie a blue bow. Again, I always have to adjust them. You don't want them so big that it overpowers your card. You do want them to be good and tight. So, get my white bow here. I like them tied together better, but there's an option for you. So, you get the general idea. I'm going to try and tie them together again. See if I can make it look a little bit better. Just got to keep this ribbon good and tight. Don't short change yourself on ribbon length when you're cutting it. That's part of the problem here. Is I probably should have given myself a little more ribbon length. just ribbon. Okay, so now I'm going to spread the bow out. And if you wanted to add some curling ribbon to it, you could do that. I'm going to mess with this a little bit more because I don't really like it to go that direction. I want it to come more around this way. And if you really want it to stay in place instead of moving around, you can take these, what's called a uh, adhesive dot and they come in various sizes and again these are in the scrapbooking section and this one's pretty big I don't know if you can see that there but this will hold the bow where I want it to be so I can put this clear dot down and then my bow will adhere to that and then I'll go back and I'll trim off my ribbon ends. And there we have a bow and another card. So just move that back up where you want it to be. So I got a little bit tight. It's kind of moving, tearing my card here a little bit. So you want to be careful of that. So there you go. Not the prettiest, but it you get the general idea. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed and got some ideas.